Hey everybody, Biddy James here once more. This time with another video revisiting one of my characters known as the Surgeon. I wasn't too happy with the last video I did. I found that the finished product didn't have the same appeal I wanted for the character. And as such, I decided to run by a new edge on the sculpt. Um, to redefine some new characteristics, just kind of change it up a little bit, make him just just kind of emphasize the character for what he is and I do plan on maybe if you guys are interested releasing videos defining the characters so you can get more into them. Without further ado, here we are. With this one I'm planning on going for more of a flesh tone. It's something I always find quite intimidating to develop anything kind of more real or yeah just anything close to human um, so what I'm deciding I'm going to do with this one is less, it is improvised as usual, but I do have an idea in mind. I wanted to go for a dead flesh look, so more kind of fresh, but yet, I don't know, kind of like that off pale greyish colour. I don't know what on earth you'd freaking call it. But um, I did as such decide to name the mask post-mortem, as I felt this most affiliated with the look I was going for. You can see here I'm doing what I would usually do, developing a base coat. So with this I've gone ahead with white latex. As I said I'm going for a pale colour so it's important to uh, set a base colour with a light colour. Light, light white, what's lighter than white? I don't know. But yeah, I decided to go with white and from here I went to my usual black wash. I couldn't be bothered to show you, you guys seen it so many times. I then... Uh, remove the black wash gradually after having dried the black acrylic mixed with water. After removing most of the black I try to do this gently so I can keep a... For I, I like to keep certain areas darker than other areas so basically what I'm doing is defining features. So any risen features I'm gonna have lighter so any deeper features are going to be darkened to give more shadow to the mask. Even though this mask is going to have a fleshy appeal to it, I don't want it to look like it's, it's an actual human face because it's not. The character has a monstrous appeal to him and this is going to be defined through the mask. So here, this is me building up on the flesh tone. I mixed a variation of colours, one being some sort of brown colour. I can't remember what it's called, as I said I'm not good with paints. It's uh, a brown mixed with a yellow, and then I mixed a white with that as well, just to lighten it a bit. So I added the yellow to the brown together in stages, and then applied a small percentage of white gradually at that as well. So as I progressed on that, it built to this colour. So um, for damage points in the mask, I'm adding uh, red acrylic. Uh, this is just going to be uh, red acrylic with a small amount of water, very small amount. This is just to kind of get in the base colour I want for the sort of gorier elements of the mask. For edges, I'm giving it a raw feel. I, I didn't necessarily want it to be bloody. I wanted it to look more kind of uh, like the flesh has just been kind of damaged. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But um, I'm defining all of the cracks, so the idea is that I want to go darker on the inside of the cracks and a little bit lighter outside of it on the edges, just to show the, uh, the way it's affected for skin. Um, I'm going to define this throughout various areas of the mask. There's quite a lot of damage points, especially around the mouth. Once that's done, I then go over with a red acrylic with liquid latex. It's about a 60-40 ratio as usual. With this one I also applied just as with before. I think it was red acrylic mixed with blue this time. Prior to that it was red acrylic mixed with uh, a deep brown. Um, once again I did do this in stages until I did get the colour I wanted. So this latex with the red is going to go over the inside. So in that sense the outside is still going to have that darker hue to it. So I wanted these areas to appear more bloody and the outside to seem kind of bruised. So I'm going to go over this with some light strokes just so I can kind of define the outer areas, just make them look more affected by it. You can see now under natural light as I 
spent several days doing his paint job. Um, at this point I'm doing it during the daytime, so I managed to have lateral light into the studio. You can really see the uh, grey skin tone coming through. It still doesn't do it much justice, but I will give you a little preview of it at the end as usual. Here, I'm dry brushing, so this is just a uh, black acrylic. I probably shouldn't have gone for black because it was a little bit too harsh on the mask. Um, but I did it, anyway. <laughs> so here I'm just going to coat over the uh, red with latex. I wanted to kind of give it more of a glossy look, just to give more character to the gore. If you seal it with the latex over before you go over with anything else, it does give it more definition. So here I'm going over with my Dremel drill over on these little features I added. This is the first time I actually took the effort into actually sculpting um, an additional feature to the mask where I could run the straps through so that way I'm not actually damaging the mask itself. It gives it more of a retro slasher feel as well. I just kind of like the way it looked. Uh, I went over that with the black wash over the white to give it a rustic feel. And then I'm going over it now with a black acrylic with latex. This is the same ratio as previous. So we're going to be looking at a 60-40. Just as usual. I think that's probably the best ratio because you don't want to have too much latex. Otherwise it would just come out so glossy. And it would just have this really kind of irritating feel to the uh, consistency. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You know, if you want... If you want to make a gimp mask and go ahead and add more latex, but <laughs> that's not the idea of this one. I wanted a matte feel, so this is supposed to give it kind of like a old black leather. I wanted it to look really kind of worn down, hence to why I used the uh, black wash prior. So that way, when the black latex sets, you're still going to have that image of the black wash underneath. Here, we're, silving, we're going to seal the overall paint job. So. As with all my masks, I'm using Plaster Dip Clear. So this took about two coats. I left it four hours between each one. And this is the freeway strap using nylon straps, um, screws, silver, and a silver metal O-ring. And finally, presenting the post-mortem. This mask itself this exact version won't be for sale but at request i will create more of these masks they will be handmade if you are interested in purchasing one of these masks please leave a comment below contact me via instagram open grave effects and we can discuss purchasing options either for this mask or any of my others also, please take your time to check out some of my other mask tutorials on my channel, as well and on my Instagram. We are getting close to Halloween with only 55 days to go, so feel free to get in touch. So for now, thanks for watching, and as always, I bid you. Sweet nightmares.